This is the broadcasting center here at the IEC General Meeting 2016 in Frankfurt. Welcome back. I'm just coming back from a session at the reinvention laboratory. It was a session about uh, safety, future standardization. And one of the uh, particular topics of this session was robotics and artificial intelligence. And as you may know, uh, these uh, new technologies are quite interesting for standardization as well. And uh, with me is uh, Dr. Martina Mara. So Hi. welcome. Thank you. Um, you are an expert. You are a columnist. And you are a researcher. You are head of Robo Psychology Research Division at uh, Ars Electronica Future Lab in Linz in Austria. So welcome again. Thank you. Um, um, Martina, what is Robo Psychology about? Uh, does it describe human psychology when interacting with robots? I, I guess so. It sounds rather sci-fi, I have to admit. Uh, and many people have the image of, uh, you know, very human like a robot lying on a sofa, being treated by me as a psychologist and talking about his very problematic childhood experiences as a young robot. Uh, that's not the case at all, because I don't care about the well-being of machines or robots, but I care a lot about the well-being of their users and their interaction partners, and they are a very much growing number. So it's mainly about um, factors of user acceptance, how robots need to be designed visually, but also behavior-wise, for example, so that they can be accepted by various target mm. groups. Okay, I see. So what would you say, I mean, based on your experience and based on your research work, do we, I mean, do humans like the robots or are <laughs> there any, let's say, problems or uh, aspects uh, which we have to consider when interacting with them? I would say we love and we hate robots. You know, it okay. really depends on the type of robot. Um, there's an interesting study done by the European Commission in 2012 where they asked nearly 27,000 Europeans on their opinions on robots. Um, and for example, they ask people where robots should be used, in which areas of life. And I think this, uh, the results of this study ref reflect nicely um, how or where we would accept robots. Um, many people said, uh, preferably, they would like to see robots working in outer space, okay. like, you know, the furthest away possible from us human beings. Mm -hmm. um, where Europeans are still very much skeptical about coexistence with robots is when it comes to areas that address us at very core competences or core aspects of humanity, like empathic care for each other. Uh, people don't want to see that much robots in uh, elderly care, in care for children, in education mm. and things like that. But the industrial field of usage, production, mm. manufacturing, um, is quite well accepted. Mm. So in general, what would you say, what are the main factors of acceptance or disacceptance, basically? <coughs> it's always an interaction between various fields of factors, I would say. Um, it's robot-related factors, like, you know, the visual appearance, the behavior of a certain robot, but it's also um, personality factors or background of the user gender, age, um, pre-experience with technology, for example. And we have situative factors a lot. Uh, just imagine, the, for example, the room where you meet the robot or mm -hmm. um, how the robot is introduced to you as a user. But when it comes to robots at the workplace, in production, for example, the classical image of industrial robots, um, based on research that is done um, yet, I would say, it's very much important to design robot motion, motion in a very predictable way, because we as users or co-workers um, who have to team up with a robot, they only can build trust in the machine if the actions of the robot are predictable. Mm, okay, so trust and predictability, I've yeah. learned. So when I try to make a bridge to the standardization issue, for example, of course we standardize robotics and uh, technologies where artificial intelligence is used. But on the other hand side, for us, it could be very interesting to use robots to making standards or to use, for example, bots or something, information, automatic mm -hmm. information systems or so. Um, if we would doing so, uh, how uh, must they look like? I mean, what would be for us important in designing some type of bot or so? 
You mean in terms of chatbots, for example, for example who would yeah, communi example, virtually yeah. communicate yes. without physical representation? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, there's not that much uh, research work done on um, acceptance of speech bots or chatbots by now. But what we can say is, again, it's probably very much important that um, people can, yeah, people get informed by the robot that it is a robot, for example. If um, people get conflicting cues from a chatbot, for example, uh, maybe the voice sounds very human-like, mm -hmm. but you know, by the pattern of answers, you get the feeling that ah, it's probably a machine or there's something wrong with the dialogue. Mm -hmm then this can be quite creepy for us because uh, we don't know, is it a real human or is it a machine or is it some kind of hybrid? So from the psychological viewpoint, I would always say that informing people about the capabilities of the machine about the fact that it is a machine is very important. Ah, yeah. Okay, I see. So uh, for us, it's always very interesting just to get a an outlook into the future or so. What would you say? I mean, what, <laughs> how creepy machines or creepy systems uh, will we have in the future? I hope that uh, yeah. we can help yeah. to uh, design machines that are not, not creepy okay, to okay. us human beings, uh, which means that uh, they are easily categorizable as machines, for example. Um, I see that um, we're going to have uh, a lot of progress in autonomous transportation systems, for example. I think that this will be one type of robot, like the, the robot car, other robotic trans uh, transport systems. This will be one type of car that will uh, be seen in our day-to-day -day life quite soon, probably already a lot within the next 10 or 15 years. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. So we got a very exciting overview about uh, robotics and artificial intelligence and uh, what we have to take care about if we want to design them. So thank you very much. IEC General Meeting 2016. Connecting communities. Reinvent standardization.